Hello everyone, in this video I am going to show you how to solve common heated bed problem which is my heat bed is not heating up, it's not receiving any power, I don't see any temperature change in my screen. These problems are mostly caused by a weak socket connection and it can happen in your AnyQbig i3 Mega, Anet A8 and Anet A6. Let's unplug our printer from the power source and let's solve this problem together. First of all, we need to inspect that is your printer having the same problem or not. Turn the back of your printer and look at this socket. Are you seeing this kind of a burn mark in here? Are you seeing a kind of melted cable connected to it? This is generally caused by a poor connector. What you need to do is to detach the socket. Let's see. And when we detach it, we are more clearly able to see that this power cable which carries the high ampere is melted out and I'm able to see that entire thing goes into the black. Same socket connection existed, exists in ANET A8, ANET A6 and old version of AnyCubic i3 Mega and some of the 3D printers that you might have has this common connection. Here is how to solve this problem. So first of all we will need to detach all these cables from this socket and get it off from this melted portion. Get your plier and save the cable. Detach it. And look at the orientation. And let us open this one up a bit. In here, right now, I'm cutting the cover, not the cables. Be careful to not harm them. Okay, after you open it enough, in terms of length like that, I'm going to get rid of from this portion because I don't want it anymore to be here. Okay, after you open that portion, right now what you need to do is to detach these cables. I'm going to cut them in the same length after this melted portion. So I'm going to cut this one, this one, this one and this one. Right now what I'm going to do is to directly solder these into the pins right over here so that I will not have any more problems with it. This is a quick and dirty method. So if you want to try, just do it. And do not forget the order of the connections carefully watch this video to connect them in a right order. Right now what I'm going to do is to get it off from its covers and I'm going to make a small opening of these covers, not too much. These two thick wires are the ones that are carrying the high ampere and these two are the thermistor cables which are detecting the temperature of the bed. So right now what we are going to do, what I'm going to do is to get to from this portion as well. The plastic portion, I don't want that plastic portion to be in here but at this moment please be careful to not break it entirely. What I'm going to do is to ro remove its cover. Be very careful while you are doing that because you don't want to break the entire socket. And as you can see, I properly opened the entire thing up. You can use heat shrink tubes in here as well. What I'm going to do is to avoid short connection. I'm going to bend the ones that I am not going to use. Let's look. I'm going to use the first one, third one, fourth one and the sixth one. Right now I have banned the two of the pins which I'm not gonna use. So let's start the soldering. Right now pick your favorite soldering machine and put some solder balls to the pins where we are going to connect the cables. As you can see I put my solder balls on each of them. Make sure that your cables are sh your cable openings are short enough because we don't want them to be too long and touch each other. They should be short enough to just make the connection properly for us. Okay. 
hold them from a distance because you don't want to burn your hand either. Right now, let's put some solder on top of them as well. To keep them rigid. Okay, my cables are ready too. Since we have the solder on top of them, what I'm going to do is to press the cable to the pin and make them connect to each other. And this one is done. And the order follows with the black and then blue comes in. And I'm going to connect the blue one. Okay, right now I'm going to solder the green one. And it is done too. And be careful to hold these cables from a distance or you may burn your hand or you may heat, you may feel the heat as well. Right now I'm going to connect the red one to the last pin. Uh, it is done too. I have finished soldering our four cables into the related pins and what we are going to do is to cover them with the electrical tape so that we will avoid any kind of connection in between them. Just to warn you before you start this quick and dirty method you need to be familiar with soldering. If you don't trust your soldering skills don't do that. Get and help from a person who knows how to solder properly that will be very beneficial for you. Right now, our printer is ready to go. Let's insulate them with an electrical tape. If you want to secure more after you cover each of them with a tape, you can recover the entire thing with another tape. And it is done. And your printer is fixed. Let's connect it into the power. I have connected into the power and let's go to the tools, click preheat, preheat PLA and we see them both of them are in the rising temperatures and to check if our heat bed is properly working or not what you can do is to observe the red light underneath and also check the heat temperature right now as you can see my temperature has keep increasing when we go back to our 3d printer we are able to see that this red light is back and it is heating up properly and this is how we end up our connection it is properly working and you don't observe any more heat in here because since that connection was really really bad the socket was heating up and it was burning out and melting the cable so we will not have this issue anymore so our connection is safe and better and right now our bed heated up into the enough temperature so that light is down and let's go to the screen and we are able to set that and we are able to see that our heat bed temperature of 50 celsius degree and congratulations you fixed your 3d printer also i have faced with the same burning socket issue with my anet a8 as you can see this is my anet a8 and this is my burn socket in here what i did basically i opened the entire pin for the burning cable and i just replaced this one but it was better to replace all the cables as i show you in this video in the ANET one I have melting cable problem with the ground cable and in the Anycubic i3 Mega I was having that burning cable problem with the power cable which was the red one. This is the end of my video. I hope you guys like it. If so, please hit the like button. And if you guys want to find more about tips, tricks and the discounts for 3D printers, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the button somewhere around here to subscribe to my channel. In the next video, I will be comparing different types of heated beds to see which one is the best possible option. And to catch up this upcoming video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.